Thank you for watching today. This is Kinnear. Welcome to another Starfield video. With the August update, Bethesda stealth dropped two new spacesuits into the game. They're available through the Trackers Alliance vendor stash. I'll show you my favorite and fastest ways to get Astra's, how long it could take to get all six pieces. One of these sets is really great, especially for new players. The other, not so much. But let's get started. So we're gonna grab both of these suits and take a closer look at them. The Vibrant Suit and the Bold Suit in red. We'll just step out here onto the bridge, try them on ourselves. Let's do the Vibrant Suit first. And it's a nice green and yellow, first of all. It has a high corrosive protection value. I think with the Xenofresh suit or the Xenofresh apparel that you get in the Neon Quest or some others, I think, you can get yourself up over 85 protection pretty easily in this suit, which means if you've got any environments that are highly corrosive, this is good for that. We'll take a look at the suit itself, take a look at the pack, and a close-up look at the helmet. Now these aren't new designs. The core armor, the spacesuit, pack, and helmet exist in the game already. This is primarily a different set of colors, traits, and protective characteristics. Now I did put them all three up here. If you want to look at the pack, the helmet, and the spacesuit side by side, one of the things I noticed about the Vibrant suit is that the overall physical energy and EM protection seem low compared to other suits in the game. However, they have excellent traits that mitigate damage before you even get to that point. So here we see that this suit has a high corrosive protection rating, assuming I pick the right apparel underneath it as well. That'll get me up to 85. I believe it's a 20, 20, and a 30, so it's 70 on its own. Let's look at the bold suit real quickly. And I will do an, a more in-depth discussion of the individual traits that are part of the legendary set at the end of the video. So this suit looks a lot like the Explorer set. The suit does and the pack does and the helmet looks like it is part of the not the Tracker's Alliance, but the Bounty Hunter's helmet, I believe. And I would say that my general impression off of this is that the suit itself has higher physical and energy and EM damage protection at a core, but it's worth pointing out that those don't scale over time. So if you were to wear this suit over time, just like the other one, that becomes less and less important. And this suit doesn't seem to have any scaling damage mitigation impacts or anything significant. It's very much about exploration and gathering. So we've got hacker plus two, we've got plus 20% oxygen capacity, got some protection from alien enemies, resource hauler is nice, fastened is a nice 20% or 20 carry capacity boost. So we'll go into this one in a little more detail later as well. So the, the issue with these two suits is that they drop primarily from a vendor associated with the Trackers Alliance. Now that vendor's name is Stash, S-T-A-C-H-E, which is short for probably mustache. He's in the basement of the Trackers Alliance headquarters in Aquila City. Now he's only gonna be available to you if you have completed the first quest in the Trackers Alliance line. And that is the one called Starjacker. But once he's available, you can find him in the basement and you can trade the new currency, Astra's, for legendary gear. Now, the way the new currency works, if you haven't gone through it, I have a couple of videos on that as well. You can trade him one Astra, two Astra's, or three Astra's. Those directly relate to the number of traits that are going to be on the armor or the weapon that you're going to get in return. And that means that you're either going to get an epic with one trait, a rare with two traits, or a legendary with three traits. There's an exception to this in that Stash has a three, maybe four specialized named weapons, which will turn up in rare with two traits, but they have some additional characteristics. Now, if you look at the suits that I've shown in the video here, I do have ballistic shielding, explosive shielding, heavy shielding, and pocketed on them. 
that did not come on these suits. I added that later based on my own skills. Good luck catching bad guys out there. Hope the field street. Astros, you say? I. Pleasure doing business with you. So if you want these suits, you're going to have to get them from this vendor here. Now, I can talk about another method I tried later, but for right now, this is the most reliable method I found. It's to go to the Trackers Alliance and talk to Stash, who's in the basement. I create a quick save before I start the dialogue with him. And then I'll trade him three Astras for a random piece of equipment. Now, because I'm giving him three Astras, it's going to be a legendary piece of equipment each time. The suits we're after are all legendary pieces. So I never give him one, I never give him two. If I get one of the vibrant pieces or the bold pieces, I will then inspect it to make sure it's not a duplicate. If it's not a duplicate and I want to keep it, I will create another quick save, overriding the last one, and I'll start the process again. If he gives me a random piece of equipment, I'm just noting what type of equipment it is, and I'll show you the results of that later. And I'm doing a quick restore at that point in time. So this is essentially a save scumming process. I'm just going to save once and then restore, 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 restore each time that he doesn't give me something that I want. And by the end of this, I've listened to him say all of his lines of dialogue so many times. So in this one, I got a vibrant space helmet. So that's a piece that I want. So I went ahead and made another quick save and I keep going. Now, I don't want you to think that I was getting one piece of equipment after another piece of equipment there. That is an edited piece of video where I showed you two or three of them in a row. As it turns out, the, the timing between pieces of vibrant and bold gear was far, far longer than at hundreds of attempts. What I am going to tell you is that in order to start this process, I highly recommend that you stock up on Astras. And in particular, I'm going to say you need for six pieces of armor, three apiece, you're going to need at least 18 Astras. But one of the things I've noticed while I was doing this was a lot of really good weapons come by. And it's very tempting as you're trying to get these pieces of armor to think to yourself, I should grab that weapon. So I would recommend if you're going to go out and grind the Astras in the first place in order to get a lot of them on hand so you can go through this process and pursue this, this set of armor or both these sets of armor, make sure you have some extras, at least three, maybe six, maybe even nine. I wouldn't feel bad having 27 Astras on hand before I sat down. If I was going to, let's say, put on a movie or maybe put on a, a series and binge watch it on the side while I'm having this, this repeated exchange with Stash in the basement, I'd want to have extra ones on hand so that I could pick up some of the weapons that I get. Now, if you're going to go out and grind Astras, there are a couple different ways to get them. And I'm not going to cover those in this video. I'm not going to make this a comprehensive Astra gathering video. I will tell you my favorite method is really just to go to certain specific points of interest in the game. And some of them are better than others. And it's primarily about which ones are very involved, have large underground complexes, or uh, turn out to be very maze-like. And I want to avoid those. What I'm looking for are the points of interest that are either small and simple to get into, they have as few enemies as possible, or if you're involved in the Crimson Fleet quest line and the Crimson Fleet is friendly to you, finding points of interest where you can find the primary loot box where Crimson Fleet are guarding them is the easiest way in the game to get Astras, in my opinion, because then you don't have to fight anyone. At that point, all you really need to do are find points of interest that are easy to get in, in into and out of. Now, one of the first ones that came up for me was an abandoned outpost, which isn't bad, because it's relatively small, and if you sneak around to the back of the abandoned outpost, there's only a couple enemies, two to kill to get in. When you get inside, it's a cave, and there's six or seven in there, but you have pretty easy access to the primary loot box at the back of the cave. Not my favorite, but not bad. The second one I like going to, which can never be a Crimson Fleet outpost, is a deserted ecliptic garrison, and I like that one because the primary room that you want to get to is at the top of the garrison. You can climb up the side wall without engaging any enemies to start with. There's a couple outside and there's only three inside. So you can drop down on them, usually surprise them, and you can take out those three pretty quickly and get to the loot box inside there. That one's pretty good. However, the best location that I found in the entire game is an abandoned weapon station. 
And an abandoned weapon station, you can see from above, has a ship, a partially constructed ship in the middle of it. And it has some buildings around the outside edge and walls and a small landing pad off to the side. There's a building in the left-hand corner that has the loot box. And you can approach that building from the side without engaging any enemies, or if in my case, it's occupied by Crimson Fleet without any interest at all. And so I've gone to an abandoned weapon station and I boost pack up to the right-hand side of that small room and you can just drop in around the edge, loot the box and exit. Now, if you wanted to just keep looking for abandoned weapon stations, you could do that, but you could also employ the technique of going to the planet Venus and doing a long sleep. Or like in this case, I'm gonna put down an outpost marker And I'm going to bounce back and forth between my base on Copernicus 4, which I've set up exclusively for doing long sleeps, and this outpost on Washakie, which I'm just going to name Astro Farm. I have a second outpost just like this in the same system. This is the Cheyenne system, so this is a very low level system. This isn't something you have to go out to a level 70 system in order to find Astra's. It's really just about finding and easy to access loot box. Next something for you, cop. So I'm going to go out to Copernicus 4. Now, one of the things I've noticed is I tried sleeping 12 hours at Copernicus 4 which is the equivalent, I believe, of 1,200. 24 hours always works. 12 hours did not work in all cases. There were some cases, and I didn't include the video here, where I would go back to my two outpost locations and they won't have reset. So I had to do 18 hours or I had to come back and sleep again. So I just started going with 24 hours. Now, I'm also going to suggest that this is not a one-to-one -one ratio, so every time you reset it, there's not an Astra there. You've already seen one that I looked at. The box didn't have an Astra. At best, I think I was getting a 50% drop rate, but I think it might be closer to 40% or even you know down into 30%. So I had to go back for the purpose of collecting just three or four Astra and sleep four or five times. And I had to run that cycle because every time I wasn't getting it. Now, if I'm checking two sites every time, my chances improve. But if I was just going to one site, I'm probably going to have to do this, you know, 2x, maybe even 3x in order to get us enough Astra. So. If I want 18 Astra, there's a good chance I'm going to have to hit close to 60 POIs to collect those if I haven't captured them. So I'm going to go back to Washaki. And the weather has turned terrible. The door is closed, so we know we've successfully reset it. I have an Astra and a nice piece of legendary gear. So I try to avoid things like the abandoned cryo buildings. Those are a maze and difficult to get in. If you look at this, the marker on the blue side shows where I'm at right now. I just put a little white marker next to it. That's the side you're going to want to come in and set up a outpost marker somewhere near it. If the base is hostile to you, this is going to be important. You might have to fight some things coming in or out, but it shouldn't be too much work. Catch you around. What can I do for Astros, you say? Overall, I ended up doing this 666 times, and I did keep track of how often I saw suits, helmets, packs, melee weapons, and anything that wasn't a melee weapon, any kind of gun. 
and the breakdown looked like this. It was about 20% suits, 20% helmets, 20% packs, 12% melee weapons, and 26% non-melee weapons for a total of 100%. My optimal time going through this process of opening up a dialogue with Stash, asking, you know, offering him three Astra, and then doing a restore from my quick restore was 20 seconds. Now that is on a mid-range PC with a good SSD. So my performance on that's probably pretty good. I think if you're gonna do this on, let's say an Xbox or a PC that doesn't have the same performance profile as mine, you might end up with a much longer process. I know there were cases where I had to stop and count items or look at items in detail and it took me 30 seconds. The other thing I did was every time I got a vibrant or bold item, I made a note of where I was in my total count. So you can see, I got a vibrant pack the 16th time that I transacted with Stash. I got a vibrant helmet on the 34th attempt. I got a vibrant suit on the 63rd attempt. So really after about 60 attempts, I had a full set of the vibrant armor. And I, and I didn't really need to go any further if that was the only piece that I wanted, but I wanted the full bold set too. And what you'll notice on the bold side is I didn't see my first piece of bold gear and it was a pack until my 92nd time through. I didn't see my second piece of bold gear until I was 200 tries. And the others get even worse if you look at it. I finally completed my set of bold gear when I was well into the 600 range. So 602, or 666 was my final piece of bold gear, and that was the suit. And that was pretty challenging. So I think by the end, I probably had close to seven hours into this process with some of the side stuff I did in order to set up the outposts and do some sleeping and things like that. But it looks like the vibrant suits drop quicker than the bold suits. I got a lot more duplicates on the vibrant side. I did get duplicates on the bold side. It wasn't an even one, but the suit I only got one of, and so I, I stopped at that point in time. Whether this is worth it to you or not is a, is a completely different story. I think that the vibrant suit, at first I think it looks really nice in the first place. The green and the yellow is a, is a cool look. I think the combination of the damage mitigation along with the high corrosive protection makes it an interesting, special suit for a very specific purpose. So if you're trying to put together different suits that will protect you from different types of environmental damage and you don't have a corrosive suit, it might be worth going through the process here. And like I said, the Vibrant suit dropped quicker and I probably could have gotten through it just by sitting down with Stash and doing something like 70, 80 cycles. But, you know, it may not work that way for you. Who knows? Maybe, maybe you'll see the exact opposite and the Bold suit drops all the time, but that's the numbers that I saw across almost 700 exchanges with stash at the trackers alliance and if you look at the bottom left hand side the bottom right hand side i've got all the three plates for the individual pieces copied and pasted in here the other benefit of the vibrant suit is that you get a minus 10 armor plated and a minus 10 armor plated twice essentially for physical energy and em damage and you get minus 15 from physical damage and ranged weapons and 15 percent off of melee damage and all of those are scalable damage mitigation, which is kind of interesting. Now, I think there's some strange mechanics with how damage is actually mitigated in Starfield. So in my mind, those would be good as damage scaled because they are a percentage across the board. Clearly, if you add up just the physical energy and EM protection of the suit, it's pretty low. I think all three of them add up to less than 140 each. So it's not a high end suit or combination of uh, suit, helmet, and pack. But like I said, the corrosive protection is really nice. And you can see right there, physical 138, EM 153, energy 147. So the suit's okay and probably for a lower level character and fits within a specific niche. If we look at the bold suit, pack, and helmet combination, it's a very different story. Overall, the physical energy and EM damage stacks up to be considerably higher. I think it's close to 300 in each of those categories, give or take a little bit. What's different are the traits. And for me, the traits every time the same piece dropped were identical. So I believe that the traits could be the same across the entire game in everybody's game. Let me know in the comments if you get a different set of traits. The one thing I did notice on the packs is you would see skip packs, balance packs, and power packs 
but those can be changed after the fact if you have a skill and you can do that at your own at your own workbench. But the interesting thing about the bold space suit is it it felt like it's a little more of an explorer suit. Like you get a little bit of damage mitigation from aliens, a little bit from robots, some carry capacity, some assistance while you're carrying when you're encumbered for O2, that boosted O2 capacity, a plus two hacker benefit, and uh, a headshot benefit as well. So it's a very unusual combination in my mind. Doesn't seem to have a theme associated with it. The weight looks fine on it. And if you like the red suit, you like the red suit. It's, uh, it's certainly brighter than what you get from the Crimson Fleet. In any case, it's an interesting addition in the Trackers Alliance vendor. I did go out, and I mentioned this earlier in the video, I did go out to a high-level system and try to farm any of these pieces off of spacers. And so I found some level 94 spacers and did the well-established routine of getting them very close to death, doing a save, killing them again and again. And I went through about 175, close to 200 cycles on a, a uh, level 94 spacer. And I didn't get a single piece of these arbor sets to drop for me. Now, what's happening in those cases is that you're gonna get a mix of weapons and armor, and they are gonna be a mix of rare, epic, and legendary. So it could be they drop at the same rates they would with the Trackers Alliance vendor stash. However, you're going to have to get through all the epics and rares in order to get the legendaries. And so it could take a very, very long time to drop them. That said, I saw some people on Reddit who had said that they were getting pieces off of high level enemy drops. So it's always possible. It just didn't work for me. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. Just a reminder, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is to try one more time. Whatever you're trying to do can seem impossible until it's done, so keep at it. Success is closer than you think. Please click that subscribe button and notification bell, and I hope you come back for more. Until next time, this is Kinnear, and I'm out.